Assalamu alaikum everybody. How are you? I hope you're all well and I hope that you've had a lovely couple of months settling your children back into school. Uh, we really, really, really enjoyed the summer program. If you still did not see any of those videos or you want to catch up and you want to go through the videos by yourself, they're still available. What we would like to do now is prepare you for the new conference, inshallah, which is coming up very soon. I'm not going to reveal any of the details yet as I'm going to wait for the whole team to be together to do that one but today we're going to be talking about something that you can do immediately to change your parenting style to help you to become that parent the parent that your children deserve and the have that family life that all of you deserve inshallah remember that the right of the child and the parent is the access to an Islamic education, Islamic tarbiyah, right? And the responsibility of the parent towards the child is the same as the Islamic tarbiyah. That is your responsibility as a Muslim to pass this information onto your children and make them, inshallah, spiritually steadfast, perfectly patient and lovely, righteous Muslims, inshallah. So first of all, well, let's start with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about being patient. He says in the Quran that we and be patient. Surely Allah is with those who are patient. So whatever you're feeling, whatever the situation is, we should be as faithful and as patient um, as we possibly can because Allah will never ever leave us alone. Okay, inshallah. Now we talked about patience. Okay, so there's different types of patience, right? So there's three different types of patience. One is about endurance, right? To kind of suffer and accept something. Well, yeah, to, to go through something. Okay, one is restraint when you stop yourself from doing something because you are trying to be patient. And the final one is to accept the decree of Allah. Now, these three are slightly different, I would say. And we're going to be talking about the, the most one here, which is the restraint. Mostly we're going to be talking about restraint here because this one is the one that is important, mostly important for parents. And it's the one that we come across in parenting situations right so when you are patient in islam right you are spiritually steadfast you're 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 in control of your spirit you're in control of your actions inshallah and you need to be very patient with your children that's just like the bottom line okay and you're going to say to me well how do I be patient right what do I do how can I be more patient I want to be patient but how can I do it okay first of all I just want to give you the example of practice being patient so there are lots of things right even now um, around and about about mindfulness you might have seen them you might have seen coloring pages you might have seen people say meditate you might have seen people say think through what you're doing step by step um, there's lots of information about being mindfulness and we will do separate talks on each of these um, ideas as well because being more patient cannot really be taught in 10 minutes right but I'm going to try to give you a summary so that inshallah you can immediately put these tips into practice and inshallah help your parenting journey along right inshallah so the first one is to practice being patient like I said so one of the ways of practicing being patient is don't get out your phone all the time so um, I think some of you know I've been in London for a few weeks now um, almost 10 weeks mashallah <laughs> um, it is time for me to go home but inshallah make the war that um, I am patient enough to wait the next couple of weeks um, we're just waiting for some paperwork to go through but inshallah when we do go home we will have enjoyed this whole time because we try to be patient in the situation that Allah put us in, right? Okay, but let me go back to being practicing being patient. So when you're at the doctor's surgery, when you are standing in a line, when you are, um, you know, in a situation where you would normally get out your phone, I would say to you, don't get out your phone, leave your phone in your pocket, 
okay because what you're doing with your phone is you are distracting yourself okay and you are making the time pass with you know something that you, you're trying to get yourself to do something right okay and you're finding it difficult to be patient you're finding it hard to wait but you're trying to make that time go faster by distracting yourself okay so when I say practice that's what you have to do leave your phone in your pocket or in your bag and just look around just observe what's going on absorb the surroundings think about what you know what's around you you know the location that you're in the people around you you know maybe make eye contact maybe talk to somebody right okay when I say you know look around you I was so when was it now it's a few weeks ago but I was in the hospital with my little one she'd fractured her arm and I didn't have reception in, in there. I didn't have phone reception. And this is actually where this kind of feeling started, to be honest with you. But I left my phone in my bag, obviously. I didn't have reception anyway. And I was just kind of looking around and thinking and, you know, observing people. And I overheard a conversation about a man who was a fireman and he was explaining to one of the other parents who was a dad, um, you know, all about his job and honestly it was really interesting it was quite absorbing really we were quite uh, we were all intrigued by the conversation and we were interested in what was what he was going to say we were, he was talking about the water pressure and how it's lower and they've got these machines to make it faster and so on he was talking about how um you know all the different things that the firemen do and he was explaining where the fire hydrants were because we don't have those red ones that you have in America right so there was all these things that we were learning just because we didn't have our phones on us and that started me thinking that if we don't get our phones out how much more information could we actually pick up right okay so it's a case of practicing being patient right so practice um, in situations where you are calm practice when you know you're not stressed out you're not in a rush you're not in a hurry and then you practice being patient so some of you might be on a commute right and you have to wait in a queue I'm sorry about this I'll try to turn it off um so in terms of your commute you're going to have to um you know, be on a train or a tube or inside a car, waiting in traffic. These are the times when you can practice being patient without the children, without your husband around, um, or your wife, if your husband listened to this, um, you know, but you're practicing so that, inshallah, which brings me to my second point, patience will become part of your toolbox. So your toolbox will contain this tool that is your patience right so when you're noticing a child misbehaving or when you're in a hurry and you're trying to get this child ready and the child just wants to mess about and play and you know they're they're trying your patience as we say okay you have already practiced being patient so your fuse so to speak should be getting longer and longer now this this is something that um this is something that I think I've said to a lot of people before yeah me personally I do have a really long fuse and it might be because I'm a teacher it might be because I'm the eldest in a family and I've always had to wait for my parents to you know get to me or whatever but in in terms of patience I feel that I've managed to get to this level of being really patient right and what I kind of do is I kind of think to myself you know where where's the control I can't control this whatever the situation is I can't control it I haven't been given anything that I can do to change it so the only thing that I can do is be patient so because the patience is in my control I will be patient does that make sense? So you're taking the control back 
by doing something physically, you are actually being patient. It's a thing. It's a verb. It's not, you know, um, be, it's not something passive. It's actually active. You are telling yourself to calm down. You are helping yourself to calm down. You are explaining in your mind which it it comes more and more naturally as time goes on but you're trying to tell your mind that you know we're going to be patient now a lot of people you know they'll recite uh, quran they might recite you know um do some zikr or something like that to kind of keep their mind off it and that's absolutely fine okay you might sit down with a crossword or a um a jigsaw puzzle or something like that to kind of get you to practice being patient but once it's part of your toolbox you'll be able to use it in places that you will never know okay so an example of that is uh 2015 it was around march or april easter time and we'd gone for umrah from from the dubai to saudi and the flight that we'd chosen stops off in Bahrain because I wanted to visit one of my friends on the way back. So on the way there, we were not stopping over. We were going to stop over on the way back. But on the way there, there was a sandstorm and it grounded all the flights. OK, so if you imagine an airport full of tired, irate, angry uh, passengers we didn't have any, any information they couldn't give us any information I ended up being stuck in that airport with mashallah four of the kids then um, and my husband for around 12 to 13 hours right so we arrived there at 12 and our flight out was at 1 a.m so 12 noon and 1 a.m right um, towards the end around 10 o'clock um, I was in the prayer room and, I, and we just realized that we could just sit in the prayer room and, you know, let the kids chill out a little bit. Funnily enough, it was like the quietest place in the airport at the time. Anyway, um, so we were sat there and, you know, a lady started talking to me and, you know, talking about the kids and you know how they do. And then she said to me, oh, I've, I've been here for so long. You know, I think her flight had been delayed for around six or seven hours. And then I said, yeah, me too. And then she was shocked and she said, huh, what? And then she goes, but you look fine but you don't look stressed at all. And then I started laughing and I was like, yeah, because there's nothing I can do about it. You know? What do you want me to do about it? I said, I'm not going to go and tell the pilot to go and start his aeroplane. Um, you know, obviously the weather is in our last hands. You know, I can't do anything about it. So what do you want me to get angry about? And it was kind of like this realization that went through her head like, oh my God, you're right. And she was actually traveling alone. She was an older woman, maybe, you know, 10, 10 or 15 years, um, I guess, older than my parents. But at the same time, you know, she was stressed out. She was like worried and she was thinking, you know, what's going to happen? And, you know, I'm getting late and my, um, I'm going to go to... Um, you know, uh, I think she was going back to Pakistan, I guess, or India, wherever she was from. Um, so she was on the other side of her journey. But at the same time, um, we have to understand. We have to understand that there's nothing that you can uh, control. So when you can't control it, the only thing you can control is yourself. And this is what I said with that picture today. That's what I was saying, control yourself. Make being patient part of your toolbox, okay? Now, this brings me to my next one, okay? About the age-appropriate expectations. So have expectations of your children, have high expectations of your children. One, one of the things my dad used to do before we went to someone's house was stop the car once he's parked up, turn around, and we, we can all have this image in our minds, right? He'd be like, right, children, we're walking into someone's house. I want everyone on their best behavior. That little comment, that little phrase, that little, you know, push or nudge in the right direction increases you, right? It helps you. As a child, you're like, yeah, I'm going to make my dad proud. I'm going to be so good. I'm going to be one of the best children in here, right? Okay. 
when you say that to your children, it means that you've got a high expectation of them. So they will behave because they'll think that they'll not think they'll know that you're watching them. They'll know that you appreciate when you're when they are being good. Right. And this is another thing what we've said before about behavior, catching them while they're being good and trying to kind of focus them to an, a place where they can be good, inshallah. Now, I'm not going to go into that because that's a separate video, but age-appropriate expectations, right? You can't say to a two-year-old, be on your best behavior and expect them to be on their best behavior, right? They're a child. They, they are going to, you know, mess about. They might, you know, they're not going to sit in one place. They're going to be running around everywhere. You might have to follow them as a parent. You might have to follow them around and make sure that they don't, you know, um, misbehave or ruin something in someone's house but it doesn't mean you can't go and visit people it just means that you have to be um aware of your child and what they might potentially do right and again you have to show that patience that you have that you've increased yourself in now because when that child is running around you're going to get tired you might you know everyone else might be talking away and you might be in some separate room with the baby because the baby's too excited to be in the room with everybody else right and you know what guys we've all been there everyone's done that I remember going to a park in Dubai back I don't know 15 years ago when my daughters were three and one and none of the new friends that we'd made had any kids so the three women I remember there was four of us that used to hang out four couples and we were the only ones with children and those three used to sit down with their little mojitos on this side when we were doing barbecues and I would be in the playground with my little ones right and I'd be chasing them around or whatever and I'd feel kind of like man I'm missing out I want to be over there talking to everyone you know and at some point we did start sharing the responsibility so sometimes my husband would take them sometimes me but the point is that you know, you might be in situations where you are the only person with kids. Nobody else really understands what you're going through. Once they had children, you would find all of us in the play area for a little while. And then as mine started to grow up, I would let my older kids play with the younger kids. And I'd be the one sipping mojitos at the barbecue. It's not going to last forever. So just enjoy the time that you have and be as patient as you can, inshallah. This brings me to my next one, which is invest in your relationship. Okay, when we say invest in the relationship, I kind of think of it as having credit in the relationship right um so for example when you are with your children and you spend quality time with them which is actually what this talk was going to be on but it changed to be impatient but anyway inshallah next time i come on i will talk about that inshallah um so invest in your relationship right spend time with your children have quality time with them so that when you get to that level of you know annoyance or you know they're really testing your patience you can then you know kind of bank you know you've got this bank of credit that you can work on that in your mind tells you you know what they're not a bad kid they're not doing it on purpose there must be some other reason and that stuff excuse me that starts parents of thinking about what's the other reason that my child might be uh, misbehaving is it because they are tired are they hungry are they stressed out has it been a long day have we done too much are they overstimulated did they eat too many sweets have they had some fizzy drink today and you start thinking about other reasons rather than oh my god this child is stressing me out i'm so stressed out blah 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 and you start thinking about yourself and then that poor child is is left to the side um, to deal with whatever it is that they have to deal with so finding your own patience with your child means that you're thinking long term you're being kind to them and in the end you're going to find inner peace with yourself because you're not constantly running around chasing them you are thinking about it you're being logical you're being thoughtful and you're thinking right OK, I know that this child's been through X, Y and Z. OK, so how can I make this situation easier for them? 
right? Okay, so if a child's overtired, overstimulated, you'll take them to another room. You know, if you're at someone's house, I mean, or if you're at your own house, you might chuck them in the bath and get them to bed early, right? Okay, so there's lots of things that you can do to help you be more patient with your children. The final one is to plan more and parent less. Where does that come from, right? Planning more, parenting less. That doesn't make sense. Well, it doesn't. And if you think about it first, but when you think about it, it does make sense because the more you plan, the more you don't have to parent in the moment, right? The more you don't have to um, put out fires and tell kids off and, you know, um, you know, have to discipline them in front of other people, right? When you're planning, again, you're being aware of where the child is, what they're doing, what time it is, who they're with, um, you know, what they've eaten. You, you've planned it all. It's all in your mind, right? So when you're in that situation, you know what it is that's triggering that child. You know what it is that triggers you. Am I stressed out? Am I worried? Have I got a lot on my plate? Is there something that I can send, you know, uh, ship off and let somebody else do that for me can I outsource this can I have some extra time for myself maybe it's 10 minutes sitting in the garden with a cup of coffee at, um you know in an evening or in the morning maybe it's you know an extra 10 minutes in the shower just you know while your kids are busy doing something else so try to think about how you can plan your day, how you can plan your week, your month, your year, trips out, everything that you're doing, do it with purpose and planning. And then inshallah, it makes that it makes sure that you'll make thoughtful decisions and you'll make predictions about, you know what, if I do this, this is going to happen. So once you know what's going to happen, you can then plan for it. And then that immediately helps you become more patient right? So inshallah, I hope that this been, uh, video has been really helpful to you. Please do let me know in the comments below. Let me know if any of these have rung true for you. Let me know if um, it's helped you become patient, inshallah. Let me know if you think that they're good ideas or if you have more tips. Let me know as well, please write in the comments. Do um, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, actually like our video, share it with other people, let them know that we're here. And inshallah, we will see you very soon with another short video. I'm just looking at the time and I think it's been around 20 minutes. So I do apologize. But um, inshallah, I'll do a summary for you for tomorrow so that you can have the short version and the long version. Jazakallah khair for listening. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.